Hey hey hey! I hope everyone is doing well. My name is Boom Shaka Boxer, and today I want to follow up with my previous video, Aggressive Offense, with the following video on Passive Offense. Try to recall my explanation of the water in an open container. As you slice the water with your hand, you only manage to displace water where the hand ultimately ends up. We refer to this as aggressive offense. However, what happens when you put your hand at the end of the container and push the water out from bottom to top? As you push the water, the container begins to overflow because the space for that water starts to diminish. This is what we call passive offense. And, if, and in passive offense, instead of slicing into enemy territory on your own and trying to make some magic happen, you look at where your team is going, figure out if this guy is going left, right, middle, and compliment him by either supporting him if he is alone, or going elsewhere if everyone else is relatively close to him. If you think about what I said about the water as you try to push it, yes, you manage to make the box overflow, but at the same time, there are gaps between your fingers to which water will slip through. These holes are like little gaps within your formation that the enemy can slip through. So that's why when you play passive offense, there are two things to keep in mind. It is a slow pushing motion to try to capture more map control over your enemy team. If you ever played the board game Go or Weichi, it's kind of like that. The second thing passive offense does is it enables your team to have a firm understanding where the enemy is going, how concentrated they are in a particular flank, and what your team might have to do to compensate for it. So for example, when water slips through your hand as you try to push it out of the container, you notice it. The second water slips through, you instantly can feel it, you instantly can see it, and you will instantly know about it. And that should happen in a passive offense. As you push into your enemy team, trying to get more and more map control, enemies will constantly try to slip by. And for every successful enemy that manages to slip by, someone on your team will be notified because he might have been the one to have died to that player. So what do you do in that situation? Simple. Just let your team have a friendly heads up. Hey guys, someone is trying to slip through to A. Sometimes you might have to lie. It might just be one guy now, but in a minute it will be an entire squad and in 5 it will be an army. So you gotta warn your team. If your team doesn't listen, it doesn't listen. But more often than not, good teammates will be there for each other and you'll be surprised as to how much back scratching there goes on in a good pub. So you might have a question and say something like, Hey, but the maps are all different. Not all the maps are linear. So how do you push? How do you decide where to begin and where to end? That's very simple. It regardless of whatever map or game mode you may decide to play, all the maps have a very standardized outlook on where you should definitely go first, where your first encounters may or may not be, and although the map design may seem to mask it and make you feel like, damn, I don't know where to defend or attack or support or blah blah blah, you might have to try and think of the maps the way the map designers built them, and maybe even possibly be creative about it and think outside the box. But for example, let's, do, let's use some concrete facts. If you are playing Conquest, it is very important that you and your team capture your part of the map first. How do you know what part of the map is yours? It's very fudging obvious. If you are American, you better get your ass to A and B simultaneously. And if you are from Mother Russia, you better let C and D capture you. Drink some vodka on the way to keep you warm. But what happens when you play Rush, TDM, SDM, or any other game mode that doesn't have capture points? Obviously the answer is to not play those modes. Come on, this is Battlefield Conquest, man. But to be serious, keep in mind passive offense is a team-based push. So irregardless of whatever map you may be in, the first thing you need to figure out is where your team is, how concentrated you are versus the enemy force, you may encounter, and can you participate amongst your team. Afterwards, you need to make a decision. Can you join your team and help them out, or do you need to play aggressive offense instead because your team isn't doing so well in attrition-based warfare? It is here where I wanted to introduce a key task you will need to consistently do well when participating in passive offense. If you are the front line and end up choosing a flank whether it be the left, middle, or right, 
then there isn't much you can do besides either winning your battle, holding out until reinforcements comes, retreating and giving up some territory or simply dying. However, if you are part of the rear line, which is the more critical part of a passive offense, you need to consistently, consistently perform a task which I will refer to as rubber banding. If you guys remember back to 10th grade math where you learned about focal points, rubber banding is essentially that. However, if you don't remember or haven't reached 10th grade math yet, a focal point is an area around you that you have map control over. In playing passive offense, whenever someone steps into your focal point, it is your responsibility to take care of it, as you are the closest one to it. As you gain more experience in the game, you will become extremely acute to your focal points, and as soon as someone steps into it, your animalistic instincts will kick in and tell you, hey, is a squad trying to capture a point in our focus? And as the creature of a territory, you will make sure to eliminate them. You may say to me, how can you tell when someone steps into your area? The game does a superb job on detailing every little thing that happens, whether it be a ping on the minimap, an ally or enemy step in the kill feed, bullets simply whizzing by your screen, or simply just a left behind consumable like an ammo or health resupply. As you familiarize yourself with player tendencies on each and every map, it becomes noticeably easy to pick up information and utilize it compared to when you first began playing. So. After taking B back, I quickly head to A to assist my guys. Although I really don't contribute too much here, I managed to gain a first hand glimpse on how the battle is going and it looks like my guys are doing well. Keep in mind that although it is okay to overcompensate on help offense or passive offense in order to eliminate a threat, it is not okay to undercompensate as the more time the enemy has to establish his territory, the harder it will ultimately be to reclaim it. In this example, my guys look like they are doing fine, so I decide that I should try to perhaps help elsewhere. This concludes what I have to say about passive offense. It is an offense that focuses on capturing more territory than the enemy while denying enemy players from trying to reclaim territory. The more reactive a team is on filling out those holes in your formation, the more better a passive offense will be, and the more opportunities the team will have on maintaining morale and momentum. Never underestimate how fast easy kills start to come in when everything is going your way. I hope you enjoyed this video and as always, ask questions, post feedback, tell your friends and subscribe. My following video will be a commentary on one of my gameplays in Passive Offense. This is Boomshaka Boxer, signing out.